Welcome to the Fat Field Family Podcast, where every week we talk about things like nutrition, training, how to live a healthy and active lifestyle with your little ones, peaceful parenting, education, and of course, mindset. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Keto Counterculture, at Fat Field Mom, and at Fat Field Kids. And search for Fat Field Family on YouTube. To stay up to date with everything we're doing, sign up with your email at www.fatfuel.family and check out our blog for workouts, meal ideas, and all the other cool stuff we love to talk about. Don't forget to hit subscribe. All right, welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast. I am Danny Vega, and I'm joined by my beautiful wife. <laughs> Mauda. He always stares at me. I'm like, you're so weird. <laughs> um, you know, no, she's, she's starting to get it. She's starting to understand, like expect it um <laughs> this has been a week for us but um whenever we get in the studio i don't know i'm just invigorated because we've had a, a tough week um i got into my first car accident on tuesday <laughs> everybody's safe um but we have to go through the process of like figuring out the car situation now but anyways i i don't want to waste any time because this is someone we have a guest today that uh, we've known for several years, uh, and you think about it, you know, we knew them, we knew him from Miami when we lived in Miami and Miami is a really big city, but it's also a really small city, <laughs> you know, everyone's a cousin and everyone knows everyone. For example, my cousin was the boyfriend of our current guest wife's sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I was even at one of their quinceañeras. Oh I don't know gosh. if it was Janine's or... Um, or Were you like in the dance thing? No, no, I wasn't <laughs> in it. I just went to it. I just went to the oh, party. Okay, you just went to the party. Um, but I, before we, we introduce our guests, um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about him. He was an all-county wrestler and a football player in high school. He got a full scholarship to UCF, University of Central Florida, where he rotated as a starter at defensive end his junior and senior year. After graduating, he played fullback and linebacker for four years in the Arena Football League, winning a championship with the Orlando Predators in 2001. He's competed in several local CrossFit competitions and the 2010 CrossFit Regionals. He also helped coach CrossFit Vita Brickle, which qualified for the CrossFit Games in 2011. This was back when we were doing CrossFit. We actually saw that that team crushing it yeah. at Regionals. Um, he was one of the pioneers of the South Florida CrossFit movement. I mean, I think of CrossFit in, in Miami and I think of him. You know, I Am CrossFit is... He, he opened that up in 2008, and um, it's just synonymous with, that's the original CrossFit in Miami. Um, he and his then partner then opened six total locations over the next eight years. He's the founder and organizer of the Crush Games, which is a nationally known fitness competition, and I've competed in one of them. Uh, in 2011, he also launched Formulex Supplements, which is known for its all-natural grass-fed whey protein, and he spends his time researching and traveling the country, attending fitness and general nutrition conferences. Mike is also an 11-year fi firefighter and paramedic for Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, and he recently got promoted to driver engineer. Welcome, Mike Osuna. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up, guys? Danny, that was fantastic. I, 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 that was I, so good. I, that was so good. I need to get a lot better at my intros. That was amazing, man. Thank you so much for the kind words. <laughs> oh, I wanted awesome. to make sure, man. I, I wanted to make sure know people know who you were. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I'm honored to be on your podcast. Oh, we're honored, man. Um, so let's just jump right into it. You know, we always ask our guests um, at the beginning, what is the current, what's the most critical problem you're currently trying to solve? I, I would say number one would be time management. Um, oh oof. yeah, that's the You're same like the answer second someone person. else gave us. Yeah, yeah, someone else gave us that exact answer, yeah. and that is probably my problem too. <laughs> it, 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 it's extremely difficult, and not necessarily because yeah. of my heritage, being Cuban, we're always late to everything <laughs> and trying to try to figure out the race against the clock. But um, it is when we got so many projects going on, and you're trying to have your hands um, in everything that's rotating around this industry. It's extremely difficult. Then you add uh, personal and other careers. For instance, the firefighting aspect that you did. Uh, that you spoke about earlier, those we work one day on, two days off. So 24 hours on and then 48 hours off, um, which comes around to nine or 10 days out of the month. Um, those days don't exist. They don't exist for the fitness side of it. They don't exist for my gym. Then my members don't see me. Um, my wife doesn't see me. My kids don't see me. So I have another 21 days to try to make up for that lost time on the fitness side of it, mm -hmm. on the business side of it. So the other 21 days are now spent with my wife and my kids, um, my now pregnant wife and my kids were, were pregnant again. 
I am. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh man. Congratulations. I did Congrats. not know that. Awesome. Well, I hope that we release it on Instagram before the podcast comes out because then they're going to find out through this through this oh, podcast. Oh, don't worry. Oh, yeah, we there's got, a few we more like weeks. Three, yeah, we got like yeah, three weeks. Yeah, we've got a few weeks, so you're That's good. Awesome. Good. Okay, great. So by now, everybody would know, um, at least the, yeah. the people that are paying attention to my life. So then I have um, a short amount of time to get done a lot of the projects. Oversee the business, which is my gym now, my 8-9 gym. And then the projects that we have launching within the business and our new podcast and so on and so forth. So I would say the biggest challenge that I have is time management and figuring out how to partition and then keep 100% focus and attention on those actual projects, not being distracted by other things, whether it's, you know, dealing with personal stuff uh, for the wife or for the family or whether it's social media, but completely focusing my attention on whatever that project is. And I'm getting better and better at segmentating this and saying, okay, for the next two hours, I'm focusing on the 8-9 Academy, which we could talk about later, or I'm focusing on um, our new marketing strategy when it comes to uh, bringing in new acquisitions for the gym. So slowly but surely, I'm working on that. But that is by far the biggest challenge is time. Yeah, man. I remember back in the day, um, because you is is Luke still with you? Luke. um, Luke Albert? No, Luke Albert was just a uh, competing uh, competitor, and he works with me at Palm Beach County. He used to be my. Oh driver yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, uh, at, at work. Know. Yeah, because he would tell me like at work whenever you guys had downtime, you were like pulling out the computer, pulling out the yes. laptop, yeah, trying to catch up on other stuff. It's still very true to this day is that when we finally get downtime later on in the afternoon, the guys will um, either do go outside and work out, or they'll watch some training, or they'll sit down and watch a movie. I kind of hide in either in the bunk room or the office and I kind of work a little bit, try to catch up where I can type of stuff. But um, at a busy station, it's extremely difficult. And then you have station life. It's the bonding and the training with the guys and such really building that culture in the gym, in, in the firehouse. So it gets difficult at times. So anything that I could do on shift is a bonus, but I don't really partition my time like this needs to get done because I just know the way that the station life works. Gotcha, man. Very, very cool, man. But I think I think you you've had it figured out a long time ago, man. I I just um, it's amazing to see. I remember back when we were doing CrossFit, it was like, holy crap, there's another I am CrossFit opening up. (laughs) They were just popping up left and right, man. No. And then the crush games has been has grown to be um, this this like phenomenon because it's a festival you know it's it's and i really loved obviously the samson games that was that was uh very very cool very good experience so it's just been very impressive to watch man and you know i I congratulate you for that thank you man i and i gotta give uh, a lot of credit to my old partner and still friend nick alvarez and he was the one that had the foresight when we opened up i am crossfit i met nick i had a company called premier sports training and i had a couple of um, mostly high school, young collegiate. I had a few pro baseball players that I was just doing speed and conditioning work with them because I didn't have a facility at the time. Um, and I had a couple of high school players. And then I had a boot camp, a female boot camp. Females because it's pretty much the, the only people that signed up for this boot camp. And I met Nick Alvarez and I needed to rent space from him. And at that time, I was able to rent about a thousand square feet. And I went to a weekend seminar at that time. It was called CrossFit just to continue to educate myself. And just like all the stories, I fell in love with it. Did Fran, got my ass kicked, realized, wow, this <laughs> thing is, is, is great. And, you know, the feeling that it gave me of competing against other people. And then I could see that I could maximize my time on the training floor. And then I could use the rest of it to actually grow the business. So once I found CrossFit and I told Nick, hey, listen, I want to try this thing out with the members. We're going to kind of switch this over to this CrossFit stuff. We went ahead and got affiliated and it exploded. And this is prior to... I would say that definitely the advent of Instagram, Facebook was around, but it was word of mouth. And before you knew it, we had close to five, maybe even 600 members at the original wow. 3,000 square foot I Am CrossFit. And it was crazy. It was chaotic, but there was yeah. such a great positive energy there and our members loved it. And then that's when Nick had the foresight to say, hey, you know what? There's a beautiful spot in Coral Gables that we could you know, get at a very good price. <laughs> And then he found the one in Brickle, and then he found the one in Coconut Grove. And it's, so that was a lot of that was to Nick. And basically, he just said, hey, listen, you're the golden goose. I'm going to bounce you from location to location and kind of take it on from there. And that's what I did. We developed I Am CrossFit. And then I went and opened up CrossFit Gables and developed those coaches there as well. And then I actually moved to Brickle, opened up Vida Brickle, opened that location, trained those coaches there. And by this point, we probably we had three boxes 
each box had just over 500 members. So wow. you know, this wow. was booming to say the least. And now what started happening from there was the Miami CrossFit movement. And it kind of started happening to everybody where I, you know, I had a lot of counterparts in California. We would discuss this a lot where coaches and some members would do CrossFit math. They would turn around and then they would open up, you know, three or four blocks away from you. So now you had a competitor and that's kind of how the right. boom started down here in Miami. And then it hit like a plateau yeah. in late 2015, 2016. There was some cannibalism going around where gyms were kind of eating each other. They didn't have enough members yeah. where either of them could strive. And then it was who could stay open the longest and then gain those members. So, um, you yeah, know, a war CrossFit, of attrition. <laughs> oh, man. Absolutely. Right. That's exactly what it boiled down to. And, uh, CrossFit being an affiliate and not necessarily a franchise, there was no, um, uh, geographical jurisdiction on where you could open up. So just like coach Blasman would say, you could just, the cream rises to the top. You open up right next door to me, that's fine, but let's see who has the better program, the better culture, and they'll gain all those members. Well, that's true. Some locations, but down here in Miami real estate, that's probably the biggest challenge that these small box gym owners find is once your lease is up and that uh, real estate market has increased. And now that landlord turns around and says, Hey, you went from twenty dollars a square foot to forty dollars. You just can't make ends oh, meet, yeah. and that's how they end up. Yeah. You know? So, you you are a slave to the landlord, or, or or they have the leverage on you. So that's where it kind of becomes difficult, and that's where you got to survive past that breaking point and then move from there. So it's been quite the challenge, but it was quite the whirlwind. When I opened up, I believe there was a a, a gym owner. He was a MMA. He mostly trained MMA athletes, but he was called CrossFit Ripped at the time. There was CrossFit 305 and CrossFit mm -hmm. Threshold. I believe those folks out there. But again, nobody really knew about them. I knew about them because I did my research to get there, but it wasn't all over Instagram or all over Facebook like it is oh, now. I didn't even know those guys existed before. I, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah there, that goes to was, show what right, I know. Not a lot. It's funny because those guys will throw it in my face every now and then. They're like, you know, we opened up before <laughs> you. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I'm, I, I'm not the one saying it. If there was a, if there was a family, what, what do they call these? A family tree of CrossFit. Somebody's joked around before that they're going to draw a painting. Yeah, a, a lot pedigree, of them yeah. came. Pedigree, right? Like a lot of them came from I am CrossFit. Like I, I know pretty much everybody in the game down here on the CrossFit side of it because they've either they've either been a member, they've either been a coach of mine, or they competed at Crush Games. So I have a, a vast network when it comes to the CrossFit side of it. Or you're two degrees away from me, so. You went and trained under, um, let's just say, uh, Andre. So Andre went and opened up a facility. Oh, yeah, and you of course, I remember Andre. Well, there you go. Now, there's two degrees of separation here and stuff. So just like you said in the beginning of the podcast, it's even though it, there's a large um, uh, square area down here in Miami, everybody kind of knows everybody. There's a tie there, which I didn't know that you actually had that connection with Janine, by the way. That was a... Oh! <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, you, you gotta, her. you gotta, yeah, you gotta tell her. The other thing is uh, about you bouncing around. I remember... I went to go pick up some Formulex once. I forget which one of the locations. And I, I feel like it was the Grove. It was the Grove. Yeah, because yeah. you were with me. The was kids with you, were, yeah. It was just Desmond at the time. Yeah. So that you guys had to wait in the car. We're yeah, like, oh, yeah. let's go pick up some Formulex. And, um, and I was like, is Mike here? Because I wanted to see if you were there. And they're like, no, he's over there. So that just goes to show you're always bouncing yeah, you're around. Bouncing around. I, I, it was, was hard to catch you. Yeah. yeah and it, was, it, it was definitely challenging. And that's one, one of the obstacles that I had back then is we had so much growth. And again... To Nick's credit, you strike while the iron's hot. There were so yeah. many great locations that are condensed full of people. Brickle being, for instance, it, now, especially nowadays, if you either work or live in Brickle, you're not going anywhere else. If you have a no. car, you, it's, it's so surprising true. enough. You're just going to stay there the most of the time. So yeah. it's heavily populated areas that these locations did well. Um, and my trouble would be, if you just reverse engineer this, 30 days out of the month, nine of them, I'm at the firefighting. So that's 21 days. Let's just say another nine or 10 of those days. I am now with a family that gives me half of the month. And now I have six sometimes and we, for the short time that we had seven locations. So if I'm at one location on Monday, the other five locations don't see me. They don't see my face. So that those coaches over there, those members over there have start to not even know who I am anymore. So that rapport oh. that we once had at I Am CrossFit, that a lot yeah. of these one box owners have, that culture, they got their hands and everything. I started to lose touch with that. I started to lose of touch course. with my coaches and with my members. So at the very beginning, Danny, I don't know if you remember that we used to host an event called the Civil War Games. 
Do you oh, know? yeah. yeah I, remember of that. Yes. I remember that. Right. I remember yeah. So we that. hosted what was the Civil War games in the beginning. And here's here's how the Civil was War games. Was that the Dade, Dade versus Broward or something? No, oh, that, was, no that was a uh, Broward Cup or boxes. something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a yeah, Broward yeah. Cup or right. something. The yeah. Broward Cup. Well, what we did was, so in the very beginning, three boxes, I tried to make everybody a family, right? So I had tried to keep, I am Doral, I'll, I'll say locations, Doral, Brickle, and um, Gables. Hey, we're a family. Let's go party together, so on and so forth. And what I quickly realized over a couple of months was these guys were not family. Oh, you train at Doral? Well, I train at Gables, and we're better than you are, and so on and so forth. And that's I saw that <laughs> developing, and I said, okay, wait a second. I'm going to flip the script here. I'm going to become Don Keen. Like, if these guys really have this rivalry, I'm going to make it into an actual competition. And that's how Civil War Games was built. So it was only allowed to our members. I don't, I don't believe we even charged a registration for a fee for it. We just kind of took it out of the business expense. So we turned around and we had the initial one was Doral versus Gables. And that was a hit. These members loved it. I mean, they went to war as if it was actual CrossFit Games. So then the <laughs> next year, we invited our Brickle location. And then the third year, we invited Coconut Grove location. And we actually did it at the Boys and Girls Club. So Think about a full-blown event at a venue, but only an in-house competition, making no money off of it, That's but crazy. just for our members alone. And I'll tell you the funniest part about it. In one of the workouts, I said, you know what? I'm not charging anybody a dime, so I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. So it was, I don't know, <laughs> I, I can't remember the rep scheme, but it was 21.59 of kettlebell swims, swings and box jumps. But after Oof. that six-minute air wrap or whatever it is, time limit, they had to pull out a box from underneath the, the actual box jump itself and decipher what it was and when they pulled it out it was the game operation so now they had oh to for each for each bone that they pulled out so we had a great time it was really a that's lot awesome. of fun. Oh, that's awesome that's awesome but i capitalized on the on the fact that okay it's very difficult to keep these boxes because they're so far and the demographic was a little bit different okay so let's just pin them one against another and oh, that was actually oh, Doral, of Doral, Doral the, and Grove, yeah of course with the different thing. neighborhoods you're gonna have a total different right. W- yep. yeah right so that that worked out for the best was actually you know making them rivalries and fostering that rivalry obviously in good sense but when we used to have beach workouts or or social events man we were two three hundred people deep when we would have nutrition lectures we would have 250 people there it was ridiculous the amount of uh, participants that we had because we had such a big network of people that were part of this i am crossfit family if you will so it, it worked out for the best but i will tell you this much my life is a, a lot less hectic now with just one yeah. location i'm very happy right now well i'll say this man i i don't know I, I might be speaking out of you know like i don't know because i'm not there anymore but i feel like uh post that time um, has there been any anything that can get that many people together in a place like that? Besides, you know, obviously Waterpalooza and Crush Games. Like, is that do, is there still like has something filled that that vacuum? For us, no. Um, it's extremely difficult now. Even to this day, we'll still throw events and we'll do socials. Um, not too long ago, we had an event that we partnered up with another gym at the wharf uh, to raise money for breast cancer awareness. And even those are still difficult. We had 60 people show up, but that was again, partnering up with another gym. So yeah. it's, it's very difficult with the demographic that we're in with general fitness demographic on putting the, the, the nail on the head on exactly what event or what social or what gathering it is that they want. We do a nutritional lecture. We'll get a good 40 to 50 people here, but then we do a night out and it's a totally different demographic. It's, there's still our membership, but it's not the same people because it's just, where yeah. are they in, in their life? Or do they have kids? <laughs> they want to party. Are they more concerned about their education? Exactly. So you have the people that are just laughing at, yeah, gluten, that doesn't exist. I don't have a problem. I eat Cheetos all day long. Those are the people <laughs> that are going out And then you have the other folks that now are in their upper 40s and 50s. Those are the folks taking fantastic notes at our nutrition lecture. So it, it's very sense. difficult to yeah. bring that, that group around. I think, I don't want to say those days are long and gone, but I think you'll mostly find them at those large event competitions like Wadapalooza and so on and so forth. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about like your training and nutrition philosophy. How would you say it's evolved like over the last decade? Because things are always changing. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. So on the nutrition side alone, I used to be a huge paleo head. I mean, that's when we first got into it, which was 2008, 2009, right? Okay. So, so. Rob Wolf was still doing the, the weekend seminars for, for CrossFit, and obviously he was a paleo guy. 
Um, so I was all about the paleo lifestyle. I would travel the, the country and go to paleo effects and participate in all these seminars, ancestral health symposium. So that's where we gathered most of our, our information. And that was pretty much was being pumped out at the time. Um, now I, I've taken a complete different approach when it comes to the nutrition side. It's more individualized. So that's good. Um, yeah, I like that. If it's keto, if it's macros, if it's paleo, if it's uh, Mediterranean, if it's vegan type of thing, it just, as you guys know, it's basically what works and what fits for you. Right. On the nutrition side, the, uh, there, there's a, uh, I think it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I, I can't remember the actual part of it, but I learned so much that I realized I don't know anything about nutrition. <laughs> yeah. So That's it's me, time man. for me to turn for the experts, right? So, so you, you fall into this dogmatic world of paleo and then you realize, yeah. wait a second, carbs aren't that bad for you. And you know, there are such things as safe starches and maybe sugar isn't as bad as you think, or maybe eating, you know, 80% of your diet in fat isn't as bad as you think. Like what the hell is going right. on here? Now it's time for me to turn to the experts, right? And I, and now I'm sitting here bouncing questions off of him just because it's his job to make sure that he's up with the latest and greatest studies and, and science, scientific research. And that's where we brought in Eric Bustillo. So now in January of 2019, we're launching our 8-9 Nutrition and Sports Performance Department, and it's headed by a registered dietitian, and he is up. This is his only um, project, and his only line of uh, livelihood is tackling the nutrition side of this. So we brought him into our gym now, and he's going to be working out of here. And that's the approach that we're going. Right now, my personal approach is I, I'm, I've teetered with the ketogenic diet, and now because I'm trying to put on some size, I'm back to – kind of counting macros it's instinctively the, depending on how busy i am so it all right. depends on my lifestyle if i'm yeah. launching a project like i am now with the a9 academy once i'm launching that now it's like you know what i'm going to eat intuitively i know that i'm trying to put i've, I've already counted macros so much that i basically yeah. know how many times i eat how much what does my plate need to look like and if i'm training this is what i've earned if i'm not training this is what i'm not going to eat that type of thing so that's my new approach to my personal nutrition. Um, on the training side of it, I've geared it down significantly. And by that, I mean pretty much chasing the intensity. And I don't mean intensity, the powerlifting side of intensity, more like the CrossFit intensity is how yeah. how hard and bad can you redline? And you remember these days, Danny. Oh it's how gosh. hard can you go? How shitty can you feel? <laughs> yeah. For real. <laughs> like, are you dead? Right. Do you, did you exactly. die? <laughs> Yes, that perfect. signifies whether you had a good workout or not. And I've learned, again, learned so much. In 2015, um, I hurt my back, back squatting. I was going up against a 21-year-old kid that was a lot stronger than I was. And me just being stupid, I, um, I hurt my yeah. back. I herniated L4 and L5. Uh -huh. um, and it kind of like made me rethink the way that I was training. Overtraining, lack of sleep, obviously with the yeah. fire department. Uh, we're up at times, like last night, we're up all night. So all these things... Um, they have a symbiotic relationship and they could hurt us. And where I thought, maybe I'm just going too hard at this. And I needed that injury to kind of pull me back and go, first of all, your foundation sucks. So you need to start working on your basic movements. You need to get back into that. Second of all, you need to start realizing you're not that 22 year old football player anymore. You're now a 40 year old man and your priorities are different in life. So you need to kind of reevaluate the way that you are with your own personal training. So the way that I train now is basically very similar to the way that I program for my members and for some of my clients. Obviously, remember, I mean, you know this, Danny, if you're running across a gym or a small box, you program for the, depending on who your demographic is, right? I'm just going right. to talk to you about mine specifically. General population. That's pretty yeah. much what I have out of my membership here is general pop. These people just, they want to look good. They want to feel good. And they understand health and longevity side of it. I have a little yeah. bit of an older demographic here in the Co Coconut Grove area. So we program as such. We actually give them, quote unquote, intensity level. So look, this is the day that I want you to go hard because tomorrow you're probably just going to be doing farmer carries and maybe some core work. And that's when I want you at a three. So we prescribe to them how hard we want them to go because we understand, you know, oh, that's uh, good. That's HBA, so, good. This culture. so it's difficult. There are a few members and I'll tell you this, much: there are a few old Michael Sunas in our gym. And they're <laughs> the guys that if I have them doing just like, isometric stability work, they'll turn to me and go, hey, what's going on here? This isn't CrossFit. Yeah, I don't feel like throwing up and pump the brakes. Look at the big picture. Look at our, our yeah. macro view of what we're actually doing here because CrossFit Games is not necessarily a reality for you. What I care about is, are you going to be 50, 60, 70 and able to still squat and function and play with your grandkids? And I know that's very cliche, 
But I see that no. day in no. and day out. It's, it's, not, important. it's so important. Right. We had uh, three calls last night. Two out of the three were just simply picking up people that fell on the floor and couldn't stand yeah. up on their own. You oh, know, yeah, and I we're know. talking about 70, 80 years old. So it's extremely, and that's what, that's my reality. So that's basically where we're at now. So when it comes to programming or, or training, I, I still lift heavy. Uh, okay. This is all relatively speaking, not, not Danny Vega heavy. Michael well, Suna heavy. So what's heavy <laughs> for me, right? I don't even know so, if I lift heavy. I haven't lifted. <laughs> I barely lifted this month. I'm, I'm just like <laughs> wasting away, right. but I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, so we are, so I program according to one, my lifestyle two if my sleeping pattern. So I understand, did I sleep enough in order to train today? And I figured out a training cycle where if I don't train today, because last night I ran three calls after midnight, which made me pretty much up all night. I'm not going to go very hard today. I might do something uh, soft and light just so that I feel that I did something just for my, my peace of mind, but I'm not going to lift heavy. I'm not going to squat heavy. My intensity level is going to be very, very low. Um, and I'll, I'll earn that tomorrow. I'll make it up tomorrow. So that's pretty much where I sit. is. I still lift heavy relative to what my heavy is. I still do one or two short, probably 10 to 12 minute metabolic conditioning type stuff um, with low risk of injury, meaning I'm not snatching 75 times in you know 15 minutes at 70 percent of my one rep max if i do barbell cycling it looks more like a like barbell cardio if you will so the weight is extremely extremely low but i still that's still important in my lifestyle because if we catch a fire whether it's residential or commercial i still gotta hump it so i need to be in shape in order for this type of stuff so yeah maybe you could argue that it might be taking some days maybe months hopefully not years off my life at the back end but I still need to be in that type of cardiovascular and muscular endurance shape in order to perform my duties as a firefighter. So of course. Um, I, I really, I rethink my training all the time just to make sure that I'm hitting the nail on the head. And, and guys like you said, Danny, yourself and Ben, I, you know, I listen to podcasts, I read latest articles, I try, I dive into mass, I jump into all that literature just to make sure, okay, am I doing what's maximizing my capacity or my genetic potential for myself? And then I turn to my members, we just did a survey um, and stop me when I'm rambling on here, guys. Oh, no, you're I'm fine. Cuban, you're like a talk forever. <laughs> we just did a survey of, of our membership not too long ago because I want to make sure that I am fulfilling their needs. And I want to make sure that I know who is in my demographic. And that's pretty much, I think we nailed it here. We have a group of folks that are between 35 to 40, 45 year olds, um, affluent uh, people, right? So these folks, where I paid attention to football when I was growing up, you know, all through that, that 20 when you should be hustling, 20, early 30s years, these folks were getting an education and making money. But what yeah. they started to put in the back burner was their fitness and their health. Yep. So in this survey, we categorize like, what is it that they want to do? Do you want to compete in the CrossFit Games? Do you want to look good naked or do you just want to feel healthy or prioritize these for me? Where would you list them? And that's where we are with our programming. We coincide with what they want. We do a lot of supplemental stuff for because we do have a little bit of a younger generation here that they still want to, you know, build their booties and, you know, burn right. some fat off their hips and so on and so forth. So, yes, we do add supplemental stuff. We do encourage personal training sessions when they need it. But most of our programming is general pop style programming. But that's great, man. That's the that's the majority of people that have issues. I, I know exactly what you mean about the, the like after a certain point. Like, that's why I started to hate CrossFit in 2013, because like I had to, we had to do like three or four wads and, and, and I was like, man, I I don't, I don't want to train anymore. (laughs) Like it was obvious I wasn't listening to my body. Um, and then of course I traded that for destroying my body with, with (laughs) power. Yeah, Yeah. but no, no, that's, that's so important, man. It's so important for more people to like, think about the bigger picture. I know that like you get in this obviously the the group fitness environment of crossfit and the competition environment and the like that's a good thing but not when not when that's like the only thing that there is you know because people are just going to get hurt and that's where crossfit gets a bad name and that's why you know you have the longevity that you have that's why some of these other um great coaches have the longevity because they haven't um succumbed to that you know let's let's make everybody a fire breather and let's every you know let's let's you know do 50 box jumps followed by you know 50 uh what's my other thing oh 50 tap and go deadlifts you know and and people are getting blowing out their backs and stuff you know let's 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 worry about moving better and feeling better yeah. but also of course addressing all of those things you know and it's funny because there's been a uh, a 
a wave of confusion over the past couple of years on what is CrossFit. And any time that any of my members or just anybody from the outside questions me on CrossFit, I counter question them with, okay, how are you defining CrossFit? Because if you look at CrossFit programming on, on dot com, if you look at their programming, there's days that they have seven sets of one rep at yes. 90, 95% of your one rep max. And that's it. That's yep. all they have, right? Yep. The next day, it could be a seven-minute AMRAP of burpees. That's all they have. So I think what kind of happened here was that Cro CrossFit, the strength and conditioning program, started to get overshadowed by the CrossFit games. And right. that's what became the new CrossFit. So the general public was either... Yeah lining up for this counterculture type of mentality i'm going to go hard and kill myself or they were saying this isn't for me i'm not that fire breather these people are hurting themselves so on and so forth so now what used to be your advertising edge i'm a crossfit box as opposed to you know such and such fitness now has actually turned around and became detrimental so it started hurting your business to have that crossfit label and you could kind of just look around the community and see even famous CrossFit athletes that have dropped or hid the CrossFit name because it was hurting their bottom line. And even though they loved the culture and they understood it, people weren't walking through their doors because they were now intimidated by CrossFit. And they would say, I'm going to get in shape to go to a CrossFit box. When wait a second, some of the best fitness practitioners are in that CrossFit box. They could show you how to move and everything's yeah. so scalable. But the marketing, the advertising, yeah. what you saw was these amazing CrossFit Games athletes that are the 1% of the 1%, they're not yeah, the normal. Yeah. I don't have anybody. Yeah, that's not normal. Yeah. Even in, not normal. I mean, even our 2011 team, these were fantastic athletes, but we didn't even finish in the top 10 at the CrossFit Games. So they're just, yeah, so and that's, that's how so CrossFit, exactly. They were getting defined as what CrossFit was, and it wasn't the case. So when I turn around and I tell these folks, well, what do you consider CrossFit? And they tell me, I want to feel like I'm being buried. Well, then listen, I'm not the box for you. Th this is not what we do here, right? Yeah. Because we are programming smart. Any monkey could grab a whiteboard and just start throwing reps and, and create it's a true. chipper no, and so movements true. and say, and they'll finish it. And everybody in the gym that day will be, wow, what a great workout. When I'll turn around and go, uh-oh, no, no, not so much. I'll tell you a quick funny story. Um, in 2012, Myself and Sergio Garcia, which is a very good friend of mine, and he was actually on that team. We went to do our coaches prep course, our CrossFit coaches prep course, which was which is now the CrossFit level two. So we went to San Diego and day two, the beginning seminar was programming. And Chris Spieler uh, posted up a couple of workouts. And he said, okay, guys, we're going to look at these workouts and we're going to pick them apart. Okay, we're going to talk about the art of programming and we're going to pick it apart. And the first workout they came up, I looked at the workout. He gave you about 10 or 15 minutes to take notes. And then he turned around and opened it up to the audience to say, okay, guys, what are the goods and bads with this? Right. And he started off with the bads and everybody started saying volume, 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 volume. And I looked at Sergio and I said, dude, that's our workout. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's our workout. That's Friday's workout. So we looked it up real quick on our phone and sure enough, it was Friday's workout. Wow. So Chris stood up. Chris said, okay. This is somebody's workout in here at your gym. Do you want to, you know, defend yourself? Do you want to say who, you know, you don't have to, if you want to, you can stay anonymous. And I'm like, you know what? Okay. So I stood up and I'm like, all right, all right. Guilty. That's charged. <laughs> yes. <absolutely." laughs> I said, you, you're right. There is too much volume, but I have a logistical issue. Okay. Because my six, seven and eight o'clock class have about 30 to 40 people. And I don't have enough equipment. I haven't been able to keep up with the new acquisitions. So I'm behind on equipment. So I have to move everybody through this chipper. That's number one. So that's the biggest problem is logistics. Number two was, man, and remember, this is the early days. I said, if I program anything less than something that kicks their ass, I get people turning to me and complaining that they don't feel like they got to work on it. So think about yeah. that for a second. Yeah, if so I do true. a seven minute um, AMRAP of burpees. My members are turning to me and go, dude, I pay you $150 for you to put me through seven minutes of burpees. <laughs> they don't want to hear, guys, look at the big picture. Now I stand my ground. Now yeah. I yeah, of course. This. But, but the, it's changed. The industry's changed. You don't see a lot of uh, many of those CrossFits. Again, the advent of social media has put out so much information out there that a lot of our members or, or past CrossFitters understand that they don't have to redline every single 
workout in order to get better. Uh, Rich Froning's uh, documentary, he stated it in there. You know, he's, he's very calculated on the way that he trains and he hits that intensity uh, not as often as people think. He just has that ability to go hard, but he doesn't hit it when he people think he as much as he hits it. So there's a perception on what CrossFit is and what actually CrossFit is. And Greg Glassman has taken a big stance here. And I don't know if you guys have, have been able to keep up with it on no. um, the no. CrossFit health side of it. So he, he launched an initiative called CrossFit health. He okay. actually now hosts CrossFit level one certifications for doctors only medical doctors only. Wow. And That's great. he's kind of put CrossFit games, not by the wayside, but he's making the distinction between this is the CrossFit games. These are the people that are the 1% of this community that are busting their ass to compete. That is not who we are. Don't define us by that market. We are a strength and conditioning program that's looking for health and longevity. And he'll even say it. He actually said on the CrossFit.com podcast, he said, I couldn't even name you the top five years winners. It's not that he doesn't care about it, but that's not where his focus is. Yeah. So I love that now he's reinforcing this so that I could turn around and go, guys, check out CrossFit.com's programming. They actually program really smart and check out what the founder of of CrossFit itself, Greg Glassman, is saying. So I've been able to at least silence some of my members that are loyal members. They've been with me for many, many years that I'm no longer kicking their ass day in and day out. That's so interesting. And then there's the other thing is you also have the members that... Um, that are the, the loyal members, but they're, they're just the normal people Then they have, to, their needs have to be met because then everybody, if, if someone thinks that, you know, that you're only trying to help your athletes, then that's another challenge too, right? Cause you have to, you have to, yeah. you know, make the right programming for your athletes, make sure that your athletes stay because you want to keep those, those badasses. And a lot of the time they're coaches. Um, but then you have to program and spend time on the other people. It's, it's not an easy, uh, balance right no this is th this is a challenge that i could imagine most uh crossfitters or box owners face is programming for the general pop with the scalability to increase or decrease for your low-level fitness folks or for your quote-unquote elite athletes and i'm using the term elite relative per that box yep so being able to keep these folks satisfied is the the challenge and give them just enough stimuli so they're adapting to that stimuli, but not too much to crush them. So what typically happens is this, and I, I'm only going to speak for my box now. We have a handful. When I say a handful, maybe 10 to 12 competitive athletes, local competitive athletes. So they compete in the open, obviously. They compete in local competitions. Some of them get into Wadapalooza, but mostly small little weekend throwdowns that they do here. Even though they represent a minority, a 10% group of folks in my gym, they have the loudest voices because they're the ones that are able to do string muscle ups together, rope climb with no legs, um, do the 30 inch box jumps like nothing. Right. So people look at them and say, whoa, 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 what are these guys doing? I want to get there. And then they turn around and go, Mike, you got to program harder. And I say, pump the brakes. I'm going <laughs> to add a level scalability so that you can maybe work on some of your goats. But Susie that just started last week has no business trying to attempt um, you know, a full blown squat snatch. I can't even get her to squat correctly just yet. So we're going to hold her back. And it's taken a little while to bring these folks in as our ambassadors and evangelists. And they have, they've bought into the system. They've bought into the programming. They understand that when it comes to competition time, I'll either help them out or they'll do their own program because now these folks, they do a lot of homework on their, on themselves. And they say, Hey Mike, what if I add, you know, some, Barbell cycling to the end of this workout. I'll say, oh, maybe you want to do that in the beginning because you know it's highly technical, that type of stuff. So I'll help them if they want to program on their own. My main focus is general pop. Those guys, I love them in my box, and they actually add a lot of the, the culture to it. But my main, there's a couple of boxes around me that focus on athletes. Um, I focus more on general population because if you look at the five mile radius of my location here, that's who I have living around me. And I'll go back to the demographic. These are the folks that spent time making. Uh, a name for themselves in the business world, doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, politicians, so on and so forth. That's where, that's where my gym is located right now. Yeah. They're not coming in here to compete in the CrossFit Games. They have two, three kids at home. They have a million dollar house. Like they just want to look good naked. They just want to yeah, feel a good type of thing. So <laughs> they don't have time for that. I, I, and I am them now, 30, 10 years ago when I was 30 year old Mike, I was still ready to run through a wall type right, of thing. You right. know what I'm saying? When we went to the 2011 Games, 
the only reason I didn't compete in that coach is because I wasn't better than those three guys. If not, I would have been competing now. I have no desire to compete exactly. at that aspect of it. Of There's course. other things that I want to compete and I enjoy doing, but not at that level. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with that. Well, you know what? I have to, th this is a good segue. I, speaking of other things, I obviously I've seen you with, um, I've seen you with a gi from time to time. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know, but uh, like, I'm going to be starting jujitsu in a few weeks. So, um, how do you incorporate that into your training and, and what unique benefits, obviously for you as a wrestler, I'm jealous because mm -hmm. like, for me, I know one of the biggest challenges for me is going to be learning how to take people down because that it's just so the mm -hmm. movement is just feels so unnatural to me, but you know, how, how do you incorporate that? Is that something that you're doing regularly? No, at all. And, and, <laughs> and we go back to time management. This yeah, is something that I would love to do. And it is, it is a sport. And I'll tell you what, I, I realize my weaknesses and I hold myself back. I could really get wrapped up in that martial arts jujitsu world. I have, which I'm sure you do as well, Danny, it, it, it hasn't died out. We've just suppressed it. We have that mechanism. <laughs> oh, we man. Have that monster yeah, that it's on or off, bro. Of it's on or off. Right. And I could very easily see myself canceling dinners with my family and, you know, uh, leaving the gym a little bit earlier to go in there and just fall into that deep, deep world because I enjoy it so much. I, I've played around a couple of years ago with a friend of mine that he did MMA and he brought me over to his facility and we threw down for a little bit. Then one of my best friends um, and business consultant, he actually is really, really deep into that world and is looking to compete very soon. And then my head coach in the evenings, Jay, he goes to Valenti Brothers and he told me, Mike, just stop in, get you a workout, see if you like it. Um, they're the Valenti Brothers in Coral Gables, their owner actually is one of our members. Nice. So I went that evening and I loved it. I had a great time. Ozzy and I went down, we threw down. We looked like just two bulls going at it because I know wrestling. I don't know MMA. So I, I, just like you said, Danny, there, there are some benefits to having the ability to take somebody down. If I'm going up against somebody that has no clue how to, you know, stand up or take down or wrestle or anything. So yes, I have any advantage, but if I go up against a jujitsu guy, they feel comfortable going to their backs Of course, where I will stick my head in somewhere and I'll get choked out. And it's happened to me on several occasions where I'm putting my head where it shouldn't be. And I'm throwing myself in the, into a guillotine or an arm bar or so on and so forth <laughs> because I only have background, but no, that sport, I have much respect for those individuals that do that. I realize that I'm completely <laughs> out of cardiovascular shape when I did that class. Because these guys go hard for three minutes straight. And I played football for so many years of my life. I wrestled for two of them. And I've never been in better shape in football than I was when I was wrestling. It's wow. just a totally different. Totally different, uh, yeah. 20 metabolic. seconds I, on, I, I just, uh, two minutes off. Correct. You know, yeah. Yes. This destroys me. And I, it kind of was an awakening there. But yeah, I'm for right now, until I launch my two projects, I'm holding back on falling into that, that jujitsu world. I wouldn't do any striking. I think I have enough... Um, you know, not to downplay this whole CTE thing, but no, I think I took enough yeah. shots to the head playing no, arena true. football um, and college football that I don't, I'm scared of what the future looks like. Yeah, man. So I'm going to avoid any hits to the head. So I just really want to roll around on a mat and throw down. My wife came that that evening just to take pictures and laugh at me. Because <laughs> she's like, you're a grown man. She doesn't get it. Uh, you're a grown man and you're wrestling. I'm like, this is man type stuff. It is. Like, it's funny because I gave out. I gave Danny the same crap. He's like, you know, I'm starting in December. I'm like, how do you have time for that? <laughs> I'm going to make time. He's like, I'm going to make time. I'm like, you better Daddy. go at 6 a.m. <laughs> Don't be taking my exactly. time. <laughs> and, yeah, and that and that's the problem, Danny. Is that imagine you know it, it's not, it's just not that hour. It's the the time it takes to drive there, and then you work out, and then you know the guys are going to shoot the shit after. Yeah. So yeah, you're actually losing about three hours in that whole process, and it's like, damn. Let me focus on the business side and on these these things that I want to get accomplished first, and then I'll give myself a little bit of credit from now. From right now, the only real tr training that I'm doing is just my hybrid type training, and eventually I'll jump into that. Love it, man. Well, we have the boys. We just started them in jujitsu. So I'm just living vicariously through them. It's just fun to How watch, like honestly. And like just they watching it, like man. the little they girls in complain. there. They go every day. It's just amazing. Yeah. They haven't, amazing. they haven't, no, well, they, they haven't, they haven't uh, complained 
Um, and and my my motivation is that. And I love it. They're so strict there. They are, and they 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 give you attention, and it's yeah. a Gracie school. But like for me, um, I I can be. My motivation is that once I get like two months in, I can go into the advanced classes, and it's not advanced. It's just meaning like you're not a complete idiot, <laughs> and the advanced classes are at six a.m. So I'm like, okay, that's my motivation. Mm-hmm. If I if I can do the month of December and January where I'm like, you know, I'll be at night, you know, missing some time. That's fine. It's just a month or two. Yeah. yeah. Maura yeah, still I, gave I, me a I, face. She still gave I'm me a like, face like, mm-hmm. eh. <laughs> 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 uh, well, talking, speaking of family, you have two kids. Well, now we know you have a third on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lucas, which is getting so big. Um, time mm-hmm. time is, goes so fast. How do you say your daughter's name? Is it Kalia? Kalia? It's Kalia. 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 Such a nice name. Mm-hmm. So how do you approach... Um, like fitness and nutrition with, with them and what are like some key learnings because we learned you know a lot with Desmond and that like we pass that you know you pass that that on to the second and third right. um, so what are a few learnings like key learnings with Lucas that that you think are important yeah it, it's been extremely difficult um, with Lucas and only because I have him 40% of the time. He's oh, from my yeah. previous marriage. Yeah, so I'm not hard. with him all the time. And I try my hardest to, and it, it's, it's modern family type stuff. So my ex and I, we get along well. That's she good. gets along with my new wife. That's great. So there's still the extended family side of it. So I try to educate that side of them, uh, that family, right. as much as I can on the nutrition side and say, guys, listen, at, at best, let's maybe try to avoid gluten. Let's try yeah. to, you know, stay away from, you know, trans fats. Let's avoid these vegetables. Like, Let's do the best that we can to not feed him junk food, like minimum. I, I, when, when he's with them, like right. I just ask for the bare minimum. And then when he's with me, we obviously practice. Now, she's done that. His mom and that family does a fantastic job. They're old school-ish Cuban. Yeah, so they're like rice household. and beans. So yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's l- 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 I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Lo potajes. Yeah, potajes. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, like, um, very healthy. They stews, do all like, the vegetables. I I, how do you even say a potaje? Like a stew, in, in, in I English. guess. Yeah, it's kind of like a stew, but they kind of blend it too. Do they blend yeah, it? Yeah, like a blended, yeah. Right. They, right. So it's nice and creamy. So they do a lot of those. Um, they do the, you know, the white rice. They do the steak and they do that stuff. You know, when they feed the steak, I'm like, oh man, maybe you could spend an extra buck and, you know, do the grass fed side of it. <laughs> like so they do a good job. That's pretty in good the mornings, though. It's, you know, the, we've pushed the eggs on them. We've pushed the berries and all that stuff. So we do the best that we can to implement it. Now, I mean, I don't know how difficult or, or, or challenging it is for you guys, but then Lucas has his school. Oh, and yeah. at the school, yeah. it's so it's hard, hard so to hard. stay on top of them and what they're going to eat and, and, you know, how many times they're going to eat and if if he should be, you know, having those, um, uh, what do you call those fish? I can't even think the of the name. Fish. Right now. The Cheeto fish. <laughs> the Cheeto fish. <laughs> That's what they are, man. They are their own they're Cheeto, not Cheeto fish. fish. I so they're funny. Like Cheeto fish. I try to hide them from him and stuff like that. But Lucas is actually... He's not one of these kids. He hates soda, so you can. That's good. I never have a problem with soda. He only drinks pretty much water when he's around us. Um, his mom did a fantastic job of introducing him to veggies and fruits nice. when he was very early. Awesome. So these are the ty- types of things that we try to implement. And w- but we do have leeways. If he's at a party, he's allergic to nuts. So if he's at a party and they're having, okay, you know, let the kid be a kid and of they'll have course. some cake so and all that stuff. Same. And we try to regulate it now. Obviously, with Kalia, it's, it's going to be a little bit different because she's now in my house. We're with her all the time, and um, I'm able yeah, to full implement. Control, yeah. Well, first of all, I control what, what's in the refrigerator. So that's first and foremost. I'm able to dictate what foods are available for her to eat. So that's a little bit different. She's right now, she's going through the whole um, uh, milk conversion into food stage. Right. Oh, so great. we're doing the, the potajes and, and the compotas and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry, I could. I, does, I, I only know how to say it in Spanish. Yeah, I, I was about um, to. I was about to start speaking like in Spanglish like a minute ago, and I had to right. correct myself. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, so on that side of it, and then on the fitness side of it, you know, we're slowly but surely implementing a fitness lifestyle to Lucas. I, I really think Kali is going to be extremely athletic because his her mom is athletic as well. Um, but Lucas, we got him in sports. We got him in soccer swimming we're trying everything we tried football this past week he was born with bilateral club feet so he has a little bit of that obstacle it's a challenge for him now but we don't hold him back from anything we let him participate in these sports and we do the best we can in order to kind of work around his weaknesses if you will which is the inability to stretch his achilles so he's 
can jump very high, can run very fast, but um, he's he's learning these sports and he's figuring out I'm good at throwing. Maybe I'm going to be a quarterback and not necessarily be a defensive back type of thing. Right. So we're still trying to push this on him. And he's getting more and more interested on what I do. He's asking very intelligent questions when it comes to me training and then the way that I'm running my business. And I, I joke around to him all the time. I'm like, man, you got to pay attention because when I retire, this is yours. Like this whole gym is yours. You got to take over all this thing. He's like, well, pump the brakes, dad. I'm only nine. You know? so, um, <laughs> I, awesome. I, I, I do the best that I can to involve him in, in as much as I can when I'm with him. That's great, man. That's that's that you can't ask for anything more than yeah, that. And you can't ask again, for it's more. like I would rather have, you know, let's rely on our education. Let's rely on on our conversation and our connection with them rather than relying, you know, on an iron fist. You know, that's that's never right. the answer, man. It's just not, you know, that's yeah. how people have issues. So, yeah. And you're, you're going to make them more creative. The minute you tell them, hey, you can't touch that because of this. You, now they're going to be even more oh, curious absolutely. and they're going to touch it because you told them not to. Like, what is that type of thing? So show them what it is. Teach them how to read labels. You know, I slowly tell them, like, look, this is how you read a label. And this is why this is the first ingredient in the label, because that's probably what it has the most of. You know, I teach them those little things. So um, I don't I don't sit them down and, you know, spank them with a ruler and say this is what goes. I kind of just try to educate them as much as I can at sporadic little moments. And he is a sponge. He just absorbs all this stuff. Awesome. Man. And then they, and then you're modeling the behavior, you know, like he's seeing. I think that's the most powerful. Yep thing about you could talk your you could talk their ear off but if you're not doing these things they're gonna know they're gonna see that so they're just like they're they see dad they see you're healthy you're fit you know what i mean like they're just gonna they you can't they can't unhear what we've said or you know unsee what they've seen so just giving them that foundation like they're gonna know they're gonna know what 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 happened the other day at jujitsu i don't remember remember with the lady what there was a, a lady drinking a coke and the girl came up to her, her daughter. Oh, the daughter came up to her and she's like, can I have some? And she's like, no, you can't have any of this. I was like, bro. I was like, girl. What, <laughs> I was like, what I was is like, this? You know, like, you what either. type of message are you sending? Wow. You know, like, I can have this Coke, but you know, you but can. you can't. You know, oh, I guess I guess that means when I when I grow up, I'm so going to have all up, the I Coke can I can. It. Right, exactly. And now I'm going to become, you know, a, a Coke with every meal when I grow up. Yeah. 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 Do as I say, not as yeah, I do. That you know, and and yeah. that becomes extremely difficult. And I don't want Lucas turning around and going, Oh, no, I can't have that because that's unhealthy. I want to educate him and say, oh, you know yeah, what? I don't want to. It's right. a birthday party. You're going to have a piece of cake. You know, you, 90% of your your meals, you, you're fantastic. Exactly. So go ahead and have that piece of cake or have that piece of cookie oh, type of thing. So, you know, uh, th- there's levels to this thing. My, my biggest thing with Lucas right now is slowly educating him. And I don't want to demonize anything to the point where he just – becomes that kid that he's obsessed with like oh no i can't have this because it has that the only thing that we push on him is obviously the peanut energy because he goes straight into anaphylaxis oh, right of course and well he doesn't him, want that either i'm sorry you can't Poor even guy. touch anybody's hand in here because there's peanuts that's the only thing that we scare him on yeah but everything else i don't want to f- put fear into his heart i just want him educated and so far he's done a fantastic job i mean i gotta put some muscle on this kid because he's a rail he Bro, is he's me tall man he's so tall 35 years ago he's He's tall and skinny and lanky. And I'm like, oh, my God, this kid looks exactly like me. <laughs> I love it. Him, so we're slowly but surely put some weight on him. Oh, no, but yeah, awesome. but you have to let them be kids. We do the same. When we go to parties, I'm like, listen, or Halloween, I'm like, yep. eat it. Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, they, yeah. you know, we even That's like great. correct them because sometimes like the other day, remember, Dean was like he had some allergies and he's like, I think it's the candy. I, I'm like, Bobby, that was five days ago. It's not the candy. It, it wasn't the candy, <laughs> but, you know, like. <laughs> Uh, still digesting. Yeah, but um, all right. Let, we we we're we're running long on time. We have about ten minutes, so I wanted to ask you one more thing. Um, of course, entrepreneurship. You know, you're someone who has done it, man. You've been doing this for, like I said, over a decade now. So, um, what are a few action items that you would suggest to someone crazy enough to leave corporate America and try to follow in your footsteps? Whether it doesn't have to be opening a gym, but you know, um, just in general, like starting your own business, b- building something from nothing. Yeah. yeah so I'm um, I'm former football player, so I, and and firefighter, so I do a lot of like cheesy acronyms and things that I could continually remember. And there's, there's two of them. And I'll talk about one of them to answer your question. And it's P squared P as in the letter P and it's passion and profit. Um, it's, it's such a difficult question to answer when people say, what do I do? And then they say, Oh, find your passion. Cause a lot of folks, especially the younger generation, they don't know what their passion is. I, I kind of stumbled into this thing and it took some years in order to get into it and realize this is my passion. We just had a, a financial meeting before jumping on this call. And the guy said to me, when do you want to retire? And I said, 
retire. I, I love doing this. There's no reason for me to retire awesome. because I just so happen to find my passion. So the other side of this P is profit. So it needs to make sense financially. And I love it when people approach me or you hear it all the time and said, this is a labor of love. Um, I, I love what I do. You know, I, this is a charitable event. You have to somehow put money in your pocket. And it's not because it's the greedy side of it. It's only because you need to live. Of course. There, you can only sustain this um, charitable uh, philanthropist point of view until the bills start coming yep. in. And once the bills start coming in, and once you have a family, and once you have kids, and once you have to provide, and people depend on you, now that passion also has to make profit. So you have to focus on those two things. I take this approach when it comes to um, the projects that I'm going to launch. I say no to a lot of things. I say no to a lot of side businesses that come my way um, because I might not be passionate. I have a fantastic idea for a firefighter business or a business that revolves around the firefighter world. I've never launched it. I've never thought about it. I've never put more than pen to paper because I don't want it to take my time because I know that it's not my passion. I, I think it can make a lot of money, but I'm, it's nothing that I'm passionate about. I am passionate about fitness. I am passionate about changing people's lives. And it just so happens that it fits the other criteria, which is profit. It makes me money. It supports my family. I give back to my community by doing charitable events like we just did the, the, the breast cancer awareness. So it has to fit those two criteria. Um, I wish that there was more of an actionable side of it. I will tell those folks out there is to write things down. When you're able to write it down and look back at it and review it once that emotional side. So here's what happens is, and, and I'm keeping my eyes on the time here. Oh, you're no, fine. no, you're fine. Here's what happens is you come up with this fantastic idea on this, um, on this new business or this new um, tool, if you will. And that excitement and emotion starts taking over but you don't realize the shortcomings or the challenges that you're going to face. Capital being one of them, marketing being another one, production being another one. So you fall deep into this world of, oh my God, I'm so excited about this project. That's the passion side of it, right? So this is something that I love. Got it. But now how does it turn into profit? Formulex is the biggest uh, example that I could give you. I was excited and passionate about Formulex. What I did not know was how difficult it was to make profit out of it. And, and this is something I don't know if you know, Danny, but we just ended up closing Formulex a couple of months oh, ago. Oh, wow. Because after, yeah, after yeah, I can see that it's competitive. putting just over a million dollars into that company, we realized this is such a difficult industry. You really have to have big and deep, deep pockets in order to compete here. Yeah. That even though the product is fantastic and I'm so passionate about it, just cut the rope right now. Just end it right now because you're drowning in this thing. It's been six years. You gave it the best that you could do and move forward. So it fit the passion side of it because I was providing a supplement or a product that people loved and that I loved, but man, it didn't hit the profit side of it. So as difficult as it was, and that was my baby and my labor of love, I walked away from it. So it's, they have to have both. If they write it down, they're able to look at it a couple of days later. And it's a, it's a process called, uh, uh, pre-mortem. So post-mortem, somebody dies and then you feel sad. Pre-mortem is the aspect where you look at a project or you look at a, a, a um, idea that you have and then calculate, okay, what if this goes wrong? And dissect and say, okay, marketing side of it, man, I'm going to probably have to spend six to seven figures in marketing alone. Do I have that available? No, I don't. Wow, that's a big red flag. Maybe that's not the way to go down. So I, ha I encounter this a lot with people that I work with and people that are members of my gym going, I'm a lawyer. I make a lot of money, but I hate what I do. <laughs> I'm going to go and open up a gym. And why? Because they look at the members, so they count the whiteboard and they go, okay, Mike has about 150 people that walk through the door. Let's double that. He probably has around 300 members. That wabah cost. I mean, they do their homework. They do what's called CrossFit math. <laughs> so they do the math and go, oh, I could open up this facility. But what they don't have is maybe the passion for it. Right. So yes, it can make money, but man, they coincide. So I think that that P squared is something that I use in my life when it comes to making projects and decisions on where I'm taking my entrepreneurial journey. And I think that people kind of need to focus on that. I, I, it's, um, it's not the best answer. No, that I can that's have a really good one, man. It's, it's a start. I love that. That is so, I love it. That's no, so I love good. it. I'm, yeah. I'm and actually, I actually like that. It's so mm -hmm. simple because it makes it easier. It's not so complicated. Mm -hmm. You just, I love that. That's really good advice. Yeah. Thanks. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to like um do some exercises with some of the ideas Yeah, with that some I of your ideas. Yeah. With the pre-mortem for sure. Great.
Awesome. The pre-mortem, definitely. I, I've, I've killed a lot of projects because of that pre-mortem. And I love those projects, but I killed it. I killed the firefighter business idea because of it. I practiced pre-mortem. I'm like, all right, this is quite challenging, and I'm not going to have the time and effort and desire to actually follow through with this. If you're a fighter or fighter out there and you have an entrepreneurial mind, get a hold of me, and I will gladly give you this idea so somebody could invent it and run with it. But yeah, if, if it's not something that I'm passionate about, I'm just going to leave it alone and stop wasting brain cells. On yeah, it. man. Absolutely. That's, that's it. Like my that's life. part of like the time management. Like if you don't, yeah, of like you have to prioritize, right? Mm-hmm. And when you talk to, Absolutely. when you, um, when you connect with Jay, if you haven't already, I mean, that, that's for sure. One of the things that Jay would do, you know, Jay Faruja, good friend of ours. Um, and he, he just makes everything so simple. He's just like, cut out all the BS, cut out all the extra stuff. Stop trying to be everything. Just what is the one thing? What is the two things? That's, and that's it. And that's what he does. Right. And that's what he's done for, yeah. for, you know, over two decades. So um, I love it, man. Yeah. I appreciate. Before I let you go, first let let me um let me say uh, let me ask you first where where can people find you on social media and and in or general wherever, wherever you'd like, like wherever you anywhere like, so people can find yeah, out more. Um, our website is train the word train the number eight the word nine dot com. That's our website. To get a hold of me personally um, on Instagram, it's mike dot mike period osuna. Uh, Facebook, Michael Osuna. Uh, email mike at train uh, it's pretty easy on there um and i wanted to say thank you man thank you for coming on because you're you know we look up to you and uh we've always loved you we've always you, you have a soft spot in our in, in our heart for you so and crossfit hearts yeah <laughs> the, feelings, the, feelings, <laughs> the feelings mutual guys i'm just sorry that you guys left but uh i plan on going up there one day and working out and visiting oh, yeah, oh dude come. i'd love that i would totally love that man it'd be a lot of fun well, thank you, man. Awesome, um, that's it for this week. We'll see you guys next week. you